Broadcasting live from the beautiful Cobb Galleria Center in Atlanta, Georgia, at Tag Summit 2020. Now, here are your Business Radio X hosts. And we are back. Stone Peyton Lee Cantor here with you. We are broadcasting live from the Cobb Galleria Center for Tag Summit 2020. Lee, this is going to be a marvelous segment. Please join me in welcoming to the broadcast President and CEO with TAG, Larry Williams, and with Aaron's, Mr. John Trainer. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Well, Larry, before we get too far into things, uh, you must be so proud to see an event like this uh, come to life and seeing all these uh, thousand plus people wandering around here, the best and the brightest in the state of Georgia. Oh, we're just thrilled. You know, 1,300 people of our closest friends, if we said, you know, we're, we're delighted to be celebrating our 21st anniversary. So it's like our 21st birthday. I told everybody this morning that we all turned 21 again. And, you know, I look forward to having a beer with them later today as we celebrate that. But it really, recogni- it really um, recognizes, you know, that we've been doing this for over two decades. And one thing that I like to talk about with Georgia uh, as it related to technology and innovation is we didn't just start this yesterday. We didn't just declare it a year ago. We've been working on the iterations of technology and innovation going way back to, you know, uh, the origins of, um, of the modem with the Hayes modem, Scientific Atlanta, and the innovations that were brought to market that allowed the connectivity that we had all the way up to great companies in cybersecurity, fintech, you know, back from check processing. So it's, it's delighted. And one of the things that I'm thrilled as we bring people together as we summit here is I love to hear the stories about people who say things like, I've built my career with TAG. I built my business with TAG. And these things are absolutely fascinating. And then right now we get to um, really talk about the trends that are really going on around the world, the global trends that impact global markets and things that are being generated right here out of Georgia. And then it's amazing the, to see the Georgia story kind of expand over these two decades as well, whereas technology maybe back in the day was very technology-oriented. Now technology permeates every industry no matter what they're doing. That's right. You know, it's, um, it, you know it, every business is a technology business because, you know, we're either creating innovation and technology and the tools to innovate and tools for companies to be successful or we're using that. Uh, technology to enable our businesses to be more efficient, to be more effective, to increase our reach. Um, I often say that Georgia is where technology meets the real world. And what I mean by that is that Georgia is, you know, we don't always attract the shiniest new gadgets or the newest social apps, but we have more companies using technology to drive revenue than anywhere else. So you know, I'll say it's not always the sexiest thing unless you think making money sexy, and then it's the sexiest thing around. And we do things, you know, it, and it's fintech. It's the often used quote that we have, 7% of all debit, credit, and reward card transactions are processed through Georgia. Um, we've got a new stat. 80% of all commercial cryptocurrency transactions are now being processed through Georgia, and that's a global number, and that's us keeping up with the trends. It is about, you know, the network access, you know, um, with the telecommunications, but also with the great other industries that, again, might not be the forward-looking brands. Some of them are, but that's what happens in Georgia. We're doing, the as Stone likes to call this, the green dollar ROI part of the it, the internet and the technology world. We're focused in on the, the things that make money and help people make more money. And uh, maybe we don't have that sexy uh, firm that gets on the cover of magazines, but we get the ones that are getting the work done all around the globe. That's exactly right. And so it's a great time to be in Georgia. It's a great time to be here at the summit because we've got you know great people here that are getting connected, that are continuing to engage with each other. And, you know, I've always believed that business finds a way. So if we get the right people in the right room together, they will figure out a way to do business together. Right. The theme of this year's summit is engage, innovate, and transform. And you can see that just the people walking around right in front of us. So now um, when you're you're kind of pitching Georgia to companies outside of Atlanta and uh, Georgia as a whole, what's the pitch to get people excited about coming to Georgia, maybe relocate their firm 
Well, you know, How important is TAG to that uh, conversation? You know, we're always uh, happy to partner with our friends in economic development at, sto- at the state and local level as they're attracting people here. A lot of it is, you know, it's their job to attract them here. It's our job to keep them here. And so <laughs> part of the, p- the pitch is, um, well, obviously, one of the highest value, best global talent, in, you know, is right here in Georgia. We have world-class talent coming out of a great university, some of the smartest people, some of the most loyal talent as well. So um, that's very important. Great business climate, you know, our tax structure, our, our willingness to let uh, companies succeed and thrive here is extremely important. Access to the world, busiest airport, being able to connect to almost anywhere in the world in a single flight. These are all great competitive advantages that we have uh, in Georgia. And above all, I'm just going to go back to the first point. Right now, talent rules. You know, whoever's got the talent for somebody to run and grow their business, that's where it is. Now, uh, TAG does a great job in kind of creating these um, professional societies, these kind of niches for people to plug into wherever they fit into the technology ecosystem. Can you talk about the importance of having so many of them and, and, and of so many of them with such quality and depth? So there's 26 societies, and we divide them up, and you know, it's the number one way that members engage in TAG. So got over 30,000 members. We've got to break it down so people have an opportunity to get engaged. And so think of our 26 societies either in the bucket of industry, function, or people. So the industries that lead, you know, uh, cybersecurity, digital health, fintech, those are examples of that. Function, everything from sales leadership to product development, all of these things are important functions that go on. And then the people, the young professionals, the diversity inclusion, the international business, all of this helps bring together those uh, those pathways. And uh, it is a perfect way for people to get engaged and also develop their pathways to leadership as they come and get engaged. They may become to learn something and educate about trends, to developing peer-to-peer networks, getting mentors, to getting on some of our boards. That's all uh, a very important part of our ecosystem and how we create. So what we've done at TAG is really created one of the most connected technology and innovation ecosystems in the country. And that gives us a competitive advantage and something that's very unique and something that uh, John Trainer, who's sitting with here, me, I know you're going to get to him in a minute, he knows very well because he, uh, he uh, uh, was definitely engaged in that whole process. And before we get to John, I'd like to talk about this is the, the summit 2020 is Georgia's largest technology industry showcase, but there's events happening throughout the year, um, for TAG and within all of those 26 professional societies, right? There's something for, for everybody in terms of almost every day of the week, you can find some TAG event. It, it feels like sometimes <laughs> that we have so many events that we compete with ourselves. So <laughs> there's always something going on. Um, either our societies, our great volunteers that are very visionary, putting on um, great uh, great events, great content, uh, creating synergies between the societies so that they um, um, complement each other, all the way up to our larger events. So like uh, the summit today, uh, we have FinTech South. Um, you know, we dominate in that industry, and a global industry deserves a global stage. So we take over Mercedes-Benz Stadium and have a wonderful forum there. Y'all have been there with us uh, over the last couple of years. Um, all the way up to Converge, where we really celebrate diversity and inclusion, really about how inclusion drives innovation. Um, so those things keep keep all of us busy and make sure that we continue to have that great connected ecosystem. Now, as part of the summit this year, there's a uh, meet the tag hero, and we got some of them pictured around us here at this uh, remote studio we're at. But we also have the pleasure to have one of the tag heroes here today. You want to introduce them? Yeah, I'll do that. Well, I'll just talk about the tag heroes because as we're looking right at this, um, cause the other thing that we do at the, at the summit is we'll induct a new member of the technology hall of fame. And so, um, happy to do that. And this year, um, we're inducting actually one of our tag heroes, uh, David Cummings, who's obviously famous for Pardot and a uh, great exit there and then starting the Atlanta Tech Village. Um, but you know, people like Tom Noonan, Jeff Sprecher, Dennis Hayes, um, all of these people, Chris Klaus, are part of that Technology Hall of Fame. So we're delighted to in, uh, induct a new one. Uh, in our heroes, as we go and uh, talk further, it's the people that have really engaged in TAG. So we have John Trainer. He is CIO at, at Aaron's. He's a board member at TAG, one of our great leaders, been engaged for, for a long time. And, John, I'm just delighted that you could join us here today. Yeah, it's great to be here. I, I will say that um, 
it's incredibly embarrassing to be called a tag hero only because I think I've gotten so much more out of tag than the limited amount that I've put in. And so um, it, it's great that we're recognizing people, but I really think that the hero here is the organization. I was uh, chairman for the committee for the summit a couple of years, a few years ago, and it was child's play what we did versus the quality of the content here, the scale, the magnitude, the value that it's bringing into Georgia, Atlanta, and the area. Uh, and so I, I think really, really tags the hero here. So now, John, um, how did a tag get on your radar and, and why did you decide to kind of say, you know what, I'm going to kind of lean into this and I'm going to immerse myself in the tag community? Yeah, I, I originally started with tag. Well, I knew about tag. Tag is the way you engage if you care about technology. And, and as we talked about earlier, every business now is a technology business if they know it or not. Either they are a technology business that knows it and embrace it or they're a business that's about to go out of business. Um, and so... Uh, it, it was important to be in that that technology community. Uh, I was approached to help with the early beginnings of what we called the Mobility Society, which was to figure out how to embrace mobility, both from an enterprise and a consumer perspective, and make that a bigger part of the ecosystem. And it's one of those foundational societies that spans across all the other societies because of the, the nature of it. And so I got involved in the ground floor of that, got to meet some incredibly good people, and then just progressively got tricked into doing more and more and more. Um, I, I think the the year that I served as TAG board chairman, uh, somebody just started congr- – people started congratulating me for uh, being – board chairman and i didn't know that i had accepted it so i think i think uh it's been a phenomenal experience and and as i said before i've gotten so much more back uh the reason i do it is to learn and to grow it's part of it is to find out who's out there that you can trust that will you can do business with people you can partner with um so many people when i need to solve a problem I have such a great network of people to tap into and say, how did you solve that? And who, who helped you do that? And then, of course, we've gotten some of our greatest talent through relationships that we've built at TAG, that talent has come into our ecosystem. And going back to what Larry was saying, it's all about talent. Talent is the foundation. Culture and talent is the foundation for a successful business. And then uh, that's good advice for the young people out there to join TAG, become active in TAG, not just join and think you're done by just writing a check and then thinking that's the end of it. But if you're actively involved, take some leadership roles, you're role modeling the behavior that some of these people might be hiring you for in the future. Well, and it goes beyond that. Um, I, we can say we, we have a multi-generational TAG uh, family in my household. So I've got a son who's in technology sales. Uh, and I think he saw the value I got out of TAG, and so he's actively involved with the Diversity Inclusion Society as well as the Cloud Society, and he's using that as a way to meet more people, understand the market, accelerate his learning, and so not only uh, would I recommend it for everybody else, I recommend it for my own, my own children. Now, let's talk a little bit about the diversity and inclusion uh, element of TAG. Why is that so important for TAG to kind of be actively involved in that space? Well, I, I'm sure Larry can talk to this. I can tell you as an employer, um, if you are not actively pursuing everybody in every walk of life, you are missing so many opportunities to learn rapidly, to develop, to grow, to understand your customer. While it's true that we're... We want to make money here. The way you make money is through phenomenal customer experience. And if you can't put yourself in the shoes of other people, you will not create a great experience. And so uh, I'll turn it over to Larry because he, he probably can cite more examples. But it is vital that you make sure you have a diverse and inclusive team. Now, Larry, can you talk about that a little bit? By all means. Uh, when we look at the demand, and uh, I gave an example earlier that there's going to be, you know, in the next, you know, several years, there's going to be about a demand for about another 1.6 million uh, technologies just in the cybersecurity space. For us to meet the challenge that we have, it's all hands on deck. And it's a challenge that all of us have to do and we all have to collaborate on. Um, there's access for everyone and there needs to be pathways for everyone to be able to engage in the great prosperity that we're having in the technology sector. So that's just one sort of the business driver. The other part is that 
you know, we talk about diversity and inclusion, but it's the inclusion part that drives innovation. That's sort of the secret sauce. How do you actually engage people um, of different walks of life uh, that come from different backgrounds, um, but also have different perspectives or different ways of approaching problem solving, engage them in a way that they're effective and that you benefit from that great uh, thought process and diversity of thought. So that's the inclusion part. And so that's why it's extremely important is to meet the demand, get the best thinking, because what we're doing today, the tools that we use today are, are not going to be in existence today. Duncan Wardle, who was the keynote that just got off stage, did a wonderful job of talking about how, you know, by 2030, we're going to be printing a lot of the things that we build today. We'll be 3D printing them in our homes, chairs, clothes, tables, things like that. To the point that he goes to the, you know, I might be a bit extreme, but saying that, you know, hammers, screwdrivers are going to be obsolete. So if you go that far, you got to think about the people that are thinking about what the next tools are and how they're going to engage with the tools that are available or even coming up with a, that next generation of ingenuity, as I call it, about what the tools that we're going to need to be able to succeed. So that's really about the visionary, the inclusion the diversity of thought, and meeting the challenge of the day that's so important to us. Now, uh, can you talk about how uh, TAG helps this kind of public-private intersection where a lot of the stuff we need, business drives, but we also need cooperation with the government regarding regulations and infrastructure that gives us a good foundation so that we can be these innovative thinkers and, and create the innovation for tomorrow? Yeah, there are a couple of things on that that, I, that I'll talk on, and it's great to have uh, good public sector partners that can help us uh, enable this. One is making sure that we have a great business climate. Uh, so Georgia is proud to be um, um, number one place to do business in the United States seven years running. No state has ever achieved that. That is a great, great talking point for us and something that we – it's because we believe that we need to have a government that lets uh, business thrive. Um, the other part is uh, you mentioned um, infrastructure. So a big initiative for us right now is rural broadband. We need to be able to get connectivity outside of the metropolitan area. And so whenever we have that rural broadband, it's really going to provide some great opportunities for people. So the challenge is to get it out to everyone. But the opportunity is it's going to be better access to education, so these smart people that we keep talking about. It's going to be better access to services. So think about digital health and the um, uh, health care providers, hospitals that rural communities are actually uh, challenged with right now. Think about the opportunities of entrepreneurs to create new businesses and being able to uh, stay outside of this core area. We have, in the next 10 years, there will be 3 million new Georgians. 3 million new Georgians. So we certainly don't want to be, you know, at 75 and 85 at 430 <laughs> with 3 million more people on there. We want to be thinking about how that we can expand um, our footprint and make sure that there are, op- there are opportunities for, for everyone else. That's also going to bring opportunities in how we approach smart cities how we approach uh, smart communities, how are we managing our road systems, our light systems, our metering, our water metering, our our, our, uh, electric grid, and other utilities. So these are great opportunities for Georgia to lead. Um, The last thing that's very important for us in the uh, public-private partnerships that we talk about is education. And we're extremely proud of what we did last year working with uh, our state um, uh, lawmakers to actually provide legislation where computer programming will be offered in every Georgia high school, just like a language. You can take computer programming by 2025. That's a game changer. That's important for us, and that keeps us at the forefront of that talent pool that's going to drive that next generation of innovation. And I think it's also incumbent upon us as technology practitioners to educate the policymakers. I don't think it, it's such a deep rabbit hole. You have to go down to really understand technology deeply. And in policies can only scratch the surface of that. And it's up to us who live and breathe it every day to do that. And unfortunately, a lot of 
and I'll, I'll say why George is different here, but a lot of policymakers don't have that deep technology background. You rarely see it. I, I worked for a United States senator uh, about 20 years ago, and he wanted to understand. He didn't have that background, and so Senator Paul Coverdell would sit with me uh, once a week for 30 minutes and have me walk him through how to use his computer more effectively. And that was him trying to bridge that gap, and I think that's our responsibility. Now fast forward to where you need to understand cryptocurrency with uh, blockchains and proof of state versus proof of work and and the regulations that have to go along with that. And it's really difficult to, to get that. Now, Georgia just got very fortunate in that we have Senator Leffler, who is someone who understands the blockchain and understands cryptocurrency and digital uh, transactions like that. So it's it's happening, but it's our job to educate and and make sure that we embrace that divide that would normally be there. Right. And technology moves so rapidly, government tends not to. And uh, government maybe sometimes is a blunt instrument. They don't understand the unintended consequences of, uh, you know, of certain legislation. Yeah, very true. But it can be, but I think... I forgot to get a bit. We got some forward thinking legislators in the state, and that's something very proud of. And also our university system of Georgia. Um, the private sector went to the university system, Georgia recently and talked about the needs and demands of careers within the fintech space. Um, they reacted very, very quickly. So, uh, within about 18 months, uh, the university system of Georgia has started the fintech academy and has already rolled out a curriculum for fintech at 16 campuses. And it will soon be at 26 campuses across the state. That's nimble. That's reactive. That's meeting the needs of business. And that's a great partnership and great examples of how um, this public-private part- partnership can continue to work. And, and since I've been involved in TAG the past few years, I have seen tangible examples of where uh, TAG will be looked to as an expert by the policymakers, by the General Assembly. And TAG will inform this is what's going to help create a more technology-savvy workforce or a better business climate for companies that want to leverage technology. And the the General Assembly has listened and made sure that those were enacted in the right ways. Now, any advice for emerging cities that are out there um, to kind of take the best of our learnings here in the state of Georgia? Is there... You know, to have a tag at their disposal, not every state has a tag or um, can maybe even create a tag. But to have that kind of uh, cooperation and collaboration between the business community, the public sector, education, everybody involved, it it, it takes kind of a mindset shift for a lot of um, municipalities. How would you recommend them going about at least taking baby steps in that area to get something like this going? Because this change is happening whether you want to deal with it or not. So you better be ready for it. And I think that Georgia is uniquely positioned to really leverage some of that. Yeah, I think, you know, there is a um, – many states do have a technology association. Most of them aren't to the – well, none of them are to the scale that TAG is. I think one of it, we're, we're really um, fortunate to have a community – that really is supportive of each other. As companies tell me all the time, they don't only feel welcome whenever they come to Georgia. They really feel and um, um, see that the people around them want them to be successful. They engage them. They introduce them. They want to make sure that people know that we're here to be supportive because their success is our success. And, that's it's again, it's not just words. They see it. They feel it. And they, uh, they're they encouraged by it. I think for some areas it's hard for them to get past that hump. And I think that, you know, I think it go, it, it's, a, it's a benefit of our southern sensibility sometimes. <laughs> we are welcoming. I say sometimes we suffer from it because we're not the big braggarts that a lot of people are. It's sort of that old adage that, you know, I'm just a southern lawyer. I'm about to eat your lunch, but I'm just a southern <laughs> lawyer. And that's where we are in a lot of our technology as well. But we certainly uh, have a welcoming environment. And again, those other areas, a lot of them are just trying to figure out how to work together. Right. I think the collaboration is the key. That's part of our secret sauce of the state of Georgia and the metro area here, that people really do spend the time with people and want to help people. And they really aren't kind of looking at things as a zero-sum game, that they really do want to collaborate. So I think... um, And we just had a tangible example of that walk right in front of us. Tom Noonan just walked in front of us. And for those of you that don't know what he has done, it is amazing the amount of success he's had. He's here at the TAG Summit 
with everybody else, making sure that the technology community of Georgia is well supported. He probably has some private yacht that he should be spending time <laughs> on, right? But he's here making sure that he's present, and that is the power that we get here. Right. I think that's differentiates us from other communities around the country. Well, thank you both for being part of the show here today. And Larry, if somebody wants to plug into the TAG ecosystem, what's the coordinates? TAGonline.org. Good stuff. Well, have a great rest of the day. And I'm excited to know who these 10 most innovative companies in Georgia are this year. Oh, stay tuned. (laughs) All right. This is Lee Cantor for Stone Payton. We'll be back in a few at TAG Summit 2020.